Morning, everyone. Any announcements you'd like to share? Fabi. Kay will be in the back after church. She's back there now too, but she'll be back there after church with tickets for the Mothers of Gra Daughters of Grace banquet, which is on May the 7th. And uh, we only have a couple more weeks and they like to know as soon as possible the count. So if you could buy your tickets from her. She is the only person selling tickets. So if you are interested, make sure you call her or see Kay. Also, she has a little project on the back table back there. There are about seven more shut-in cards left, and it's just a little card with the shut-in's name and address. She'd just like us to um, remember them and send them a card thinking of you, maybe find out when their birthday is or send them a holiday greeting, just to let them know that their um, fellow members here at church have not forgotten about them. So she'd like us to try to help her with that project too. Thank you. And one of those members is Margaret Hayes, and she had a fall, so please keep Margaret Hayes in your prayers. I'm not able to give the names of the individuals. Uh, last week I had two cases come into the hospital, both gunshot victims. Please, if you can, keep them in your prayers. I can't give their names, but please give them a prayer. One is now plegic and the other is uh, in critical condition. Please keep them in your prayers. Thank you, Beth. Good morning, everybody. Um, I have talked to you uh, asking for prayers before about my cousin who, um, I'm sorry has breast cancer, underwent a double mastectomy. She just had her, her second dose of chemotherapy on the 13th. Um, as family and friends, we put together a spaghetti dinner for a fundraiser because she is unable to work for the next six months. So they have two young kids. They're ages seven months and three years old. So things can get expensive. Formula, diapers, food, you know, just keeping their electric on and so forth in their house. So. We're going to put a poster in the back, just information about the dinner. It's on Sunday, May 20th. Um, tickets are going to go on sale. I should be able to get some tickets to sell here. They're $10 pre-sale and then $12 at the door, $5 for kids and $6 at the door. So if you guys can make it, that would be awesome. Um, again, we're still asking for continued prayers because she'll be going chemotherapy for the next six months. So thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. at our first Beaver Valley Choral Society concert here at the church. It's a patriotic concert titled For God and Country. For those of you that were here, you, you listened to a beautiful concert. Uh, and But we have four more. So if you didn't make it, you're invited, especially in Rochester, we have one more. It's at Rochester High School, Friday night at 7 o'clock. And it's going to be even a little more involved because we have a handbell choir coming and joining ours from Pittsburgh. We also have the color guard from the Junior ROTC Marine Group out of Ambridge that are going to be having, will have the colors uh, at the beginning of the, of the concert. So there will be a little more to it than what was here yesterday. But we invite you to please be there, those that were here and those that were not able to be there. Uh, it's 7 o'clock Friday night in the auditorium at Rochester High School. Thank you. Thank you. Also, during the first hymn, you're invited to come forward and make an offering of money or care products for the men's homeless shelter, Crossroads. That will be taking place during the singing of the first hymn. Please stand together. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. 
Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, give us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray together. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Are there any kids to Join me for a message. Hello. 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 How are you? How's it going? How are you? Give me an example of a favorite food that you have. What's a favorite food? Fruits? Any special fruit? Fresh fruit. Mm. Pardon? Pasta. Any particular kind of pasta? White sauce pasta. Pizza. Any kind of pizza? It's all good. What do you think? Special foods. Do you have any favorites? Bologna. My bologna has a first name. I like bologna too. You like bologna too? All right, very good. 
Did you know there's a food that you can eat and it will save your life? Did you know that? You didn't know about this food? You didn't hear about it? It will literally save your life. You want your life to be saved, don't you? Don't you want to grow old to be like your grandmother? Or your grandfather? No. Yeah? You want me to show you this food that will save your life? You ready? All right. Come on up. Come on up. It's under a blanket. It's sleeping. Did you ever wonder what this blanket is for? Huh? It's to cover it. Yes, it's like a veil. It keeps you from seeing the food, which is Jesus Christ. This is bread pushed together. Hmm? This is bread. His body. And this is his blood. Why? And this is the food that saves us. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for the food which saves us. Amen. All right, thanks for playing. The first lesson is from the third chapter of Acts, verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, by name itself, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did, all, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsively from the Psalm 4 uh, printed in the bulletin. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You will put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. The second lesson is from the third chapter of the first book of John, verses 1 to 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he, has, that he was revealed to take away sins, 
and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. Jesus took it and ate in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat. And I make a request that all those with a DNR order, please sit in one section. Where would you like to sit? If you have a DNR order, I'd like you all to sit together so we know who you are. This relates to Greg's first reading. Right at the heart of it is, to this we are witnesses. You see that? Verse 15, to this we are witnesses. Jesus' death and resurrection. D and R. The order is that we are to be witnesses to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I, I'd like to know who you are. You were thinking medical, weren't you? Do not resuscitate. And then you had to answer the question well, am I worth saving? Do I want to be resuscitated? Do I want them to rip my blouse off or my shirt off and start working on me in public? Or would I rather just, you know, move on? So you got to make this decision, don't you? Well, the same is true with witnessing. You see that right at the heart of that first reading. Witnessing to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We assume just because we're here, we're witnesses to the resurrection. I wish it were so. We get trapped. We get imprisoned. We get distracted. And there's all kinds of other things that we're about than witnessing to the DNR. We place ourselves in these traps. Out of fear, we put ourselves in these rooms. 
just like the first disciples. They, they were just guys and ladies. They had lives. They were trying to make ends meet. Some had some training. Some didn't have training. Some worked with their families. Others were on their own. Just people. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is near. Come and follow me. So they did. Training to be a witness to the DNR. Were they confused? All the time. Was there need of repentance? All the time. Same is true for us today. The same exact truth exists for us. And that's the reading from the third chapter of 1 John. We are little children. We are easily deceived. And it's so easy to not do what's right. But out of the madness and out of the activities, out of the good things and the challenging things, God is sitting us down and standing us up in the DNR section for purpose of witnessing. Now the other part of the quiz will take you to the 22nd chapter of Luke. So if you have a Bible nearby, you might want to look at the 22nd chapter of Luke. This is before the suffering and death of Jesus. This is at Holy Communion, the Lord's table. And our focus is on what happens at that Last Supper. Do you think you have a pretty good understanding, a pretty good idea of what took place at the Last Supper? Would you say in general, yes, you feel pretty comfortable? I'm not going to pick on you just because you said yes. Why well, might you? We're in the upper room. We're in Jerusalem. You know why we're in Jerusalem? There's a feast. Biggest feast of the year, right? What feast is that? It's the Passover feast, right? Palm Sunday already happened. And now they're having a meal. They found the room just as Jesus described they would find it. He gave them instructions. So during this Passover feast, which we celebrate and remember what activity that God did for his people in Egypt. Remember, that was the first Passover. And remember, they took the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost, and that indicated to the angel of judgment to pass over them. So that's what we're celebrating at Passover, that God is the God who saves us. He saves us from slavery in Egypt at the first Passover, and now Jesus is setting us down for a new part of the Passover with the Last Supper. So what is he promising? What kind of salvation, what kind of rescue do we need as a follower of Jesus? at this Last Supper. What kind of rescuing do we need? Rescue from sin. Because he gives us his wonderful calling and breathes into us and says, all right, I've given you everything you need. Now go and witness to the DNR. And we say, I don't want to sit in that section because of sin. So he's promising and rescuing and delivering that rescue just as he did the first people at the first Passover in Egypt. Now he's renewing that covenant and fulfilling it. Now what's he say in the 22nd chapter of Luke about when he will eat again? 
What do you got there? It's in two places. One is verse 18, I believe. I forget the other one. I will not eat with you. I will not drink with you again until the kingdom of God comes. Is that correct? Is that right? That's what Jesus says at the Last Supper. At the last Passover feast that he shares with the disciples. He sits them down and says, I'm not going to eat with you again. You're not going to drink with me again until the kingdom of God comes. Remember how he started the ministry? With John the Baptist? The kingdom of God is near. It's near. Get ready. Now he's saying, I'm not going to eat with you again. I'm not going to drink with you again until the kingdom comes. Go to our gospel text. And what does Jesus do in the 24th chapter of Luke? See, it brings to a new light what God is doing in Jesus Christ in the 24th chapter of Luke. What does he do? He eats. Do you ever ask yourself, what, what's the big deal? Why is he eating? To fulfill, just like it says in the gospel text, the ancient scriptures, the Old Testament and the Psalms, the ancient songs, to fulfill God's will. We're oftentimes saying, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. But did you hear? And are we a witness to the fact that the kingdom of God has come and been fulfilled? It's already done. It's been done for 2,000 years. Why didn't anyone tell me? I would have been a greater witness to the DNR. I would have sat in the proper section. We know it. We hear it for the same purposes of rebellion. That's our only excuse. Because we're rebels. But hear and see and taste that the kingdom of God has been fulfilled. And so he eats some broiled fish. Remember before this, he's on the road to Emmaus. And it's their eyes and it's their hearts, it's their minds that are opened up as he gives thanks. He takes the bread and gives thanks and breaks it and eats with them in Emmaus. It's another bit of eating. It's more than food. It's a fulfillment of God's will. The kingdom has come. Now imagine that instead of all the traps and all the distractions, that we focus all of our heart, mind, and soul and energy as the Lord is breathing into us, his resurrection presence, breathing into us the capacity to witness to the DNR. And that would be our sole purpose in eating. Whenever we eat. Wherever we eat. You would think if you're eating, say, in sacred space, in God's kingdom, that it would be easier to focus. But it's not. The same distractions and challenges when you're eating in public or when you're eating with family, this is just family. And the same challenges exist. So this word kingdom, how would you describe it to someone else? What do you mean by kingdom of God? You say the kingdom of God has come. Now what do you mean by that? What is kingdom? Don't make me have Miranda do a half hour presentation on the kingdom as a requirement for confirmation. You ready? No, 
Well, give us something. What do you got? What's the kingdom? The kingdom of God. Okay, the kingdom of God is the world. It's the whole of creation. God is the king. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is the king. From the beginning of time to its fulfillment, has the kingdom come? Is it fulfilled? Hmm. So are we part of the kingdom being real? God's rule. God is the master. We are God's servants. Also in 22 of Luke, there's a section that if you want to be the greatest, be the servant. So we believe in following Jesus as he is served. We seek to serve in the kingdom. That that's all part of our life together. The king, not only is the Lord and master, but he's also the one who's saving us. He's giving us food to deliver us from Egypt, from death, Old Testament, New Testament, right now. The kingdom has come, and God is a king, the kind of king that will save us and deliver us. That's his purpose. So he's saving us. He's calling us out as the church. We are the church. We are the witnesses to the DNR. For what purpose? To be saved, but also then to serve and save others with the proclamation, with the witness. We have specific help that we have in mind that we're looking for. Do I believe in the kingdom coming? Do I believe in the help that Christ breathes upon me? And will I participate in that help to save and heal and help someone else? You feel compelled to say yes. But so often we, we get a little bit tired. We get a little bit captive to that which is against us. And so when Jesus enters into the place where the disciples are in the 24th chapter of Luke and breathes on them, know that you're in the same section of the DNR. He's breathing on us. That we too may continue this witness for the kingdom of God has come. Amen.